This video summarizes the article titled Preclinical Characterization of Macrophage Adhering Gadolinium Micropatches for MRI Contrast After Traumatic Brain Injury in Pigs. To start with the introduction, the choroid plexus, CHP, produces cerebrospinal fluid CSF in the brain and serves as the blood CSF, BCSF barrier, preventing the infiltration of immune cells into the central nervous system CNS. However, recent studies have shown that the CHP plays a crucial role in the recruitment of leukocytes and CNS disorders by increasing the expression of adhesion molecules and enhancing the secretion of chemokines and cytokines. Imaging the morphological and functional changes in the CHP has emerged as a potential diagnostic and prognostic tool for neuroinflammatory disorders. Traumatic brain injury TBI is a leading cause of death and disability, affecting millions of people worldwide each year. Mild TBI MP accounts for the majority of TBI cases, with long-term effects that can persist for months to years and increase the risk of neuropsychiatric and neurodegenerative diseases such as depression, dementia, and Parkinson's disease. However, up to 90% of MP cases remain undiagnosed even after clinical investigation, highlighting the need for objective markers of injury. Magnetic resonance imaging MRI is sometimes used to evaluate patients with suspected TBI, but its diagnostic utility in MP is not established. Gadolinium, GD3, based contrast agents, GBCAs, may improve diagnostic utility and offer insights into MP pathophysiology by detecting changes in the BCSF barrier. However, it is not known whether GBCAs can specifically detect changes in the CHP after MP. Which is vital considering immune cells' likelihood to cross the disrupted BCSF barrier. To address this, researchers have developed gadolinium loaded anisotropic micropatches GLAMs, which adhere to macrophages and resist phagocytosis due to their anisotropic morphology. GLAMs can incorporate GD3 with greater relativities than commercial GBCAs and can potentially offer a new sensitive imaging modality to diagnose MP and provide insights into its pathophysiology. Macrophage hitchhiking GLAMs, M GLAMs, provide a differential signal in the regions of interest, including the CHP and lateral ventricles, of pigs with MP at GD3, doses 500 to 1000, fold lower than those used in the current clinical standard Gadavist. Under the same conditions, Gadavist did not offer a differential signal even at clinically used doses. To summarize, the CHP has recently gained attention for its role in the immune cell recruitment in CNS disorders, and imaging its changes may provide a diagnostic and prognostic tool for various neuroinflammatory disorders. TBI, particularly MP, is a significant global challenge that requires objective markers of injury and gadolinium. Loaded anisotropic micropatches offer a new sensitive imaging modality that can potentially diagnose MP and offer insights into its pathophysiology. 4. The study design. The objective of this study was to develop GD3 micropatches that attach to macrophages, allowing for the visualization of macrophage infiltration through the choroid plexus, CHP, after traumatic brain injury TBI. The physical properties of GLAMs were characterized, and their effects on macrophage viability and function were evaluated in vitro. The in vivo biodistribution and tolerability of GLAM and M GLAMs were tested on three mice in each experimental group, which received a contrast agent injection, followed by the collection of major organs and blood samples. GD3 levels in tissues were evaluated using IQMIS per biodistribution studies, while tissue staining and blood chemistry panels were used to assess tolerability. Additionally, to ascertain the targeting capability, of M glands towards inflamed brain tissue after mild TBI and B in a poor sign model. Two to four pigs were included in each experimental group. Animals received the contrast agent injections and underwent MRI imaging, after which they were euthanized and major organs were collected. Tissue staining was used to evaluate both tolerance and the extent of macrophage accumulation in the brain. All measurements were standardized across all groups to ensure measurement consistency. The histological examination was conducted blinded to ensure unbiased sample assessment. The mouse experiments were conducted in accordance with protocols approved by the Institutional Animal Care and Use Committee at Harvard University, while the swine experiments were conducted following protocols approved by the Boston Children's Hospital Institutional Animal Care and Use Committee. Hydrogel Synthesis. The hydrogel in this study consisted of a mixture of HUMA, mass ratio of regular HUMA and fluorescent HUMA equals 10, 1, PEG DMA, 1 KDA, GMA, 3, an IRGA Cure 2959 photo initiator, GMA, 3 solution was prepared in DI water, 1 WT percent, with sonication, regular HUMA and fluorescent HUMA were dissolved in the solution at 3 WT percent concentration at room temperature RT overnight. Next day, I2959 was dissolved in GDMAA solution, 2.5 WT percent. At 60 degrees Celsius with stirring for at least 10 minutes, and PEG DMA solution was prepared in GDMAA solution, 20 WT percent. At 37 degrees Celsius, the final hydrogel solution was prepared by mixing the solutions of regular HUMA, fluorescent HUMA, I2959, PEG DMA, and GMA. 3 out of volume ratio of 10, 1, 4.2, 1.7, 1. Glams were fabricated within PDMS templates. The hydrogel was first deposited onto quadrants plasma ashed with O2 for 60S and then spin coated at 4000 RPM for 90S before UV exposure, 365 nm for 10 minutes. The residual hydrogel outside the cylindrical holes was etched away using oxygen plasma. Glams were then isolated from the PDMS templates by printing them onto PVA coated dishes, which were subsequently placed into a minus 80 degrees Celsius freezer. Glams were resuspended at RT in culture media and added to 24 well plates containing bone marrow derived macrophages, BMDMs, cultured for 24 hours. Glams were incubated together, with BMDMs for 1.5 hours at 37 degrees Celsius and 5% CO2, after which the supernatant was aspirated, and the cells were washed with PBS. To harvest M glams, 0.5 milliliters of Acumax was added to each well and incubated for 15 minutes at 37 degrees Celsius and 5% CO2. The plate was then removed and gently thumped to detach macrophages, and the solution was collected into 5 ml tubes in equal volume of culture media, followed by centrifugation. The magnetic properties of glams were characterized by a distribution of gadavist, glams, and M glams in mice. Female BALBC mice were administered with gadavist, 0.1 mol kg, glams, 10x106 ml in saline. 200 ml, or M glams, 
6x106 slash ml in saline, 200 via the intravenous route, submandibular blood and major organs were collected and weighed at specific time points post-administration. Ripa lysis buffer was added to each organ or blood sample before homogenization, followed by aqua regia solution for two days. Supernatants were subsequently diluted with DI water, followed by centrifugation to collect a clear sample. The samples were mixed with internal standard solution, and the concentration was determined using a calibration curve made with GD3 ICP standard solution. MRI and contrast administration. The study used a porcine B model. Each animal underwent two MRI scans, a pre-injection scan, without contrast, and a post-injection scan, with contrast. The animals were placed within a 64-channel head and neck coil of a 3T scanner, Skyra, Siemens for the scans. The animals receiving Gatavist post-injection scans were taken 5 minutes after injection, while those receiving m -Glam scans were conducted an hour after injection. The contrast agent was administered via the intravenous route, either at a clinically used dose of 0.1 mL kg for Gatavist or 75 million to 175 million slash 10 mL of saline for m -Glams. The T1 map and a magnetization prepared to rapid acquisition gradient echo sequence were used with parameters such as a 4000 ms TR, 700, 2500 ms TI1 slash TI2, and an Alpha N of Yavon Yabara Alpha Vio. Of 4, 5 degrees. The imaging duration was 9 minutes. A two dimensional fluid inversion attenuation recovery sequence was acquired in the coronal plane to examine the anatomy of the injury site. However, these images were utilized exclusively for expert neuroradiology review. The animal's vital signs were constantly monitored throughout the procedure, and their body temperature was maintained using a bear hugger. For the results, design and production of gadolinium loaded albumin microbubbles GLAMS may prove promising for traumatic brain injury TBI diagnosis. Magnetic resonance imaging MRI with GLAMS as contrast agents can improve the visualization of cerebral injuries and inflammation. Hyaluronic acid was initially chosen for hydrogel formation due to its compatibility with cells by CD44. Gadolinium loaded hydrogels were made by reacting a GD3, an Alexa Floor 555 labeled methacrylated hyaluronic acid HAMA precursor, which was developed using free radical polymerization. The hydrogel materials were also tested for relevant mechanical properties. Further advances led to a unique methodology for engineering disc shaped microbubbles or GLAMS. A DMS template was made using soft lithography. Oxygen plasma treatment was utilized to increase its hydrophilicity, which allowed hydrogel deposition on the surface. Inductively coupled plasma reactive ion etching was used to remove any unwanted residue. Glams are made from subsequent photopolymerization. They were spin coated under the PDMS template and subsequently removed and purified. Loading stability of glams was characterized through an inductively coupled plasma mass spectrometry. Besides, gadolinium loaded albumin microbubbles glams were compared with GMA 3 and Gadivist for relaxation properties. Relaxivities were assessed using longitudinal T1 mapping sequence with a 7T MRI scanner. At lower GD3 concentrations, GMA 3 exhibited a marked higher relaxation than Gadivist. Glams had a higher relativity compared to Gadivist regardless of the GMA 3 loading per particle. Glams may help to reduce the orientational freedom of GD3 in comparison to Gadivist, which moves more freely. Glams exhibited a surprising margin of safety through a biodistribution study administered in healthy BALBC mice. They had stable retention over a period, indicating the feasibility of using M-Glams for long-term disease monitoring or delayed imaging. Moreover, remarkable adhesion was observed between murine and porcine macrophages and Glams. Adhesion efficiency improved as the Glam to macrophage ratio increased. However, Glams did not induce any toxicity to macrophages. It was found that inductively coupled plasma reactive ion etching Ike Bree is an important component of the production of GLAMS because they may leave unwanted residue. Finally, the utility of gadolinium loaded albumin microbubbles GLAMS in diagnosing B was checked in a pig model. The difference between the filtered and non filtered regions of the choroid plexus and lateral ventricles defined. The region of interest ROI, iodixinol, M GLAMS, and Gadivist were visually apparent at the time of administration, while only Gadivist and M GLAMS resulted in appreciable enhancement in the ROI. Gadivist and M GLAMS created comparable levels of signal intensity in the cerebral parenchyma. MRI analysis showed that the normalized intensity and CMR values in the ROI were significantly higher in pigs with M GLAM injection in contrast to the sham group. Overall, gadolinium loaded microbubbles prove to show promise in the future diagnosing of MP. For the discussion, M-GLAMs provide a means of leveraging immune cells to monitor brain inflammation after MP. GLAMs were prepared using a fabrication process to build hydrogels into discoidal microparticles. The results presented here demonstrate that GD3 can be incorporated into GLAMs with at least an eightfold enhancement in relativity. GLAMs were stable during the freeze-thaw process, which is critical in improving the particle yield and essential for long-term storage. GLAMs are made of materials, that is, hyaluronic acid and polyethylene glycol, that have been widely used in food and drug administration approved products. 50, 51. M glams were prepared by incubating glams with allogeneic macrophages. Adhesion of glams does not adversely affect macrophage functions, including cell viability, migration, and surface receptor expression. Stable binding of glams to the macrophage surface can result from the balance between the factors that promote and impede phagocytosis. Macrophages are highly effective in binding, engulfing, and eliminating particulates with dimensions larger than 0 0.5 and 52. They are capable of proficiently internalizing even unopsonized particles by scavenger receptor mediated phagocytosis through the zipper mechanism. 53, 54. In addition to the size, the shape of the particle largely affects the phagocytosis cytosis process. Specifically, particles with a high aspect ratio can evade phagocytosis by preventing the formation of the actin structures required for particle ingestion 55. The balance of these two opposite facets provides the optimal niche for glams to attach to the macrophage surface with prolonged retention times. This feature enables the stable loading of GD3 on the cell surface through preventing degradation of GD3 loaded particles by intracellular enzymes or acidic conditions and avoids the change of relativity of GD3. Due to changes in pH 56, glams are compatible with the carrier cells and can stably adhere to macrophages under different physiological shear stresses that they may encounter upon injection, circulation, extravasation, and migration 57. Together, the optimized manufacturing process, the biocompatibility of materials, and the stability of the system favor the clinical translation of this technology. And glams provided a biodistribution profile that addresses current clinical challenges associated with GBCAs. Specifically, high concentrations of GBCAs are often needed for clinical diagnosis 58 thus. 
The use of GBCAs is contraindicated in patients with existing kidney dysfunctions because of the potential nephrotoxicity of GD3, and increased risk of nephrogenic systemic fibrosis in these patients. 59. M-glams were delivered at a dose 500 to 1,000 fold lower compared with gadivist. Furthermore, M-glams exhibited negligible renal accumulation of GD3, thus altogether reducing renal exposure to GD3. The bulk structure of glams is expected to be degraded in vivo by hyaluronidase 60, but the covalent bonds formed by the methacrylate groups are expected to be relatively stable. 61, 62. This can allow GD3 to be released from glams in a macromolecular form, which has a higher stability, and thus a lower tissue deposition and toxicity compared with small GD3. Chelates, 63, 64. Furthermore, the long-term safety test revealed no evidence of systemic toxicity caused by M glams. Diagnosis of MPRI remains a major challenge. 65. Current clinical MRO imaging for TBI diagnosis usually focuses on finding observable structural damage, such as contusions, hematomas, or other injuries that disrupt the blood-brain barrier BBB in the brain per rank 66. However, to date, no imaging modality has demonstrated clinical utility in the management of TBI without structural brain injury, that is, maybe. Although advanced MRIs reveal abnormalities in large group comparisons, the findings on arterial spin labeling, diffusion imaging, and MR spectroscopy lack biological and temporal specificity. 67, 68. Without pretrauma imaging and a history of MP, these advanced features cannot be reliably attributed to a traumatic injury and cannot differentiate a patient who is affected from one who is not. Hence, a remarkable advance in the field would be the identification of a dependable method to differentiate TBI from non-P using conventional imaging techniques to interrogate a single ROI, such as the CHP. The results of the poor sign studies presented here indicate that M-glams could potentially differentiate healthy and injured brains by providing differential MRI signals in the region of the CHP and 55 using the conventional MRI. The differential homing of M-glams in B and sham pig brains can be attributed to the active trafficking ability of immune cells to the inflamed brain through the CHP, with the state of neuroinflammation being confirmed by detection of an increase in EBA, 1 plus macrophage density in post-injury brain tissues, and aligns with previously reported work in this poor sign model 69. This mechanism is in line with the findings reported by others that myeloid cells travel to the brain through the BCSF barrier after trauma 70. This migration is driven by the release of CHP-regulated chemokines and cytokines in synergy with adhesion molecules in the CNS71. In addition, the high blood flow rate at the CHP, 5 to 10-fold faster than that in other tissues, and fenestrated CHP capillaries provide an exceptional niche for circulating immune cells to access and interact with CHP stroma 72. These features may lead to the enhanced infiltration of M-glams into the CSF through the BCSF barrier, although the BBB can potentially provide another route for immune cells to penetrate into the injured brain 73. We did not observe any overt change in BBB or nearby brain parenchyma in the MRI scans. This can potentially be attributed to the large surface of the BBB, 5,000-fold compared with the BCSF barrier 74, that may hinder the localization of the contrast agents to achieve the critical concentration required for detectable MRI signals. One primary limitation of this study is its small animal sample size, limiting the generalizability of the results. Furthermore, the observed results may not fully capture the diverse range of responses within the population. Future research involving larger cohorts is necessary to validate the identified trends and conclusions. Another constraint involves the potential migration of M-glams to the inflamed brain, in conditions other than NP by the CHP. Nonetheless, when used in conjunction with other elements of the clinical exam providing supplementary information, M-glam-based imaging holds the potential to enhance the diagnostic accuracy of MP. Together, we demonstrated that M-glams are a living contrast agent that enables us to image macrophage infiltration of the BCSF barrier and its vicinity. The CHP in 55, after MP, future applications of M-glam might be expanded to other CNS disorders that involve the pathological changes at the CHP 75. In the studies presented here, allogenic macrophages were used to prepare M-glams, and the clinical applications of M-glams could potentially make use of engineered allogenic macrophages that can be manufactured at scale with further research focused on safety manufacturing and evaluation of diagnostic performance in realistic clinical settings m-glams might expand current diagnostic tools for cns disorders